Jonathan Bones. It's harsh. It's bouncy. Yeah. Gonna, okay, I have scratch. Yeah. So, Jonathan, it's lovely to be here. Hi and welcome to Biopharmore. Today I'm here at the National Institute for Bioprocess Research and Training, also known as NIBERT, in Dublin, Ireland, to find out a bit more about a collaborative study that's been ongoing between seven leading biopharmaceutical companies, NIBERT and Thermo Fisher Scientific, to look into extractables and leachables in single-use bioprocessing technologies. Jonathan, it's lovely to be here. Thank you very much for having me. No worries, Rona. I was welcome. Great to see you again. Yeah. What's an extractable? So, an extractable basically is a chemical which can be extracted from these plastic bags or these plastic bioreactors using kind of harsh chemical conditions. So, things like solvent or extremes of acid or base. But it's something which is, is in there and effectively you really need to kind of pull it out using some sort of liquid phase chemistry. And what's a leachable? Leachable is a substance that is extracted under normal conditions of use. So Jonathan, why is it so important to the pharma industry to test for extractables and leachables? Extractables and leachables are probably the biggest kind of risk or, or stumbling block to the actual implementation of single-use solutions. But more so, there's been a lot of research recently which has shown that these compounds can actually leach out into culture media and actually can have an effect on the Cho cell itself. So in this particular project, what we're looking at are basically media storage bags and, and kind of wave type plastic bioreactors, um, single use solutions which are actually used within the bioprocessing industry. There are only few studies on this uh, subject and actually a uh, few years ago one uh, extractable molecule has been found to be a very uh, big detrimental effect on the, sol on the uh, cell growth. This molecule is able to, uh, to half the, the quantity of CHO cells that can be produced. But the idea is to find the new molecules and to test them on CHO cells to see what, what is the effect on toxicity and on, on growth curve. There are seven individual companies working on this in the pre-competitive space. Um, so on that basis, the industrial partners are Pfizer, Allergan Pharmaceuticals, Eli Lilly, Mark Sharp & Dome, Janssen Biologics, Biomarine International and Genzyme. It is very important that we determine these compounds at very trace levels because we have found that some compounds can have detrimental effects even at very low concentration. So the best option is always the mass spectrometry based techniques. We try to cover the whole spectrum of extractables and leachables. So we can have, for example, semi-volatiles, volatiles, a metal, elemental impurities, and also non-volatiles. And you know, you can't determine all these compounds with only one technique. So we have applied different techniques like, for example, gas chromatography, liquid chromatography, and ICP analysis. I think a key thing really is just information. It's, you know, there's, there's certain information out there. Obviously, suppliers of these, these kind of solutions have to provide a, a certain um, lists of extractables which may be present. Um, for us it was just a really, really nice analytical and associated manufacturing challenge. Um, so this really has allowed us to go on and put this sort of information into the public domain. Thank cool. you ever so much Jonathan. Thanks Ron, thanks a million. No problem. We've heard a lot of great stuff about what this team here at NIBA have been doing in the quest um, to discover the extractables and leachables in single-use bioprocessing technologies. I'm really looking forward to seeing the presentations at the upcoming Extractables and Leachables conference. And if you want to find out more, make sure you visit thermofisher.com forward slash leachables. Extractables. <laughs> Should have gone with my gut feeling there.